So this lecture is going to be about scale up and scale out of bioreactions. So what you're normally used to is that you will always have scaling up. In bioreactions, the principle of scale out is also very important, and I will explain how that works. Now, the other thing you have to imagine is that when you start scaling up, the requirements of the vessel become very different. So here you see an example of the von Bildhofer unit, which was meant to uh, design vaccines. And all they really did is they made it bigger, but still use glass. So normally, like such a round bottom flask in the lab. So you have to imagine that as soon as you start scaling it up, there will be other requirements to the vessel. And you can imagine why glass might not be the most appropriate choice. Also, we're going to look at generation of heat and mixing and how all of this impacts on your signal. And just some general examples. So first of all, I will kind of focus a little bit on what it means for this continuously stirred tank reactor or stirred tank reactor, which is the most common approach. And then we'll also see some examples of what happens in the case of airlift reactors. First of all, the difference between scale up and scale out. You're probably used to from standard chemical engineering, all you want to do is go bigger, bigger and bigger because you end up saving a lot of the costs. And bioreactors is a little bit different. And this is because of the concept of precision medicine. So precision medicine means that you tailor the therapy to the individual patient. So now you see an example of a paper which was meant just producing one pharmaceutical for one particular patient. So think of gene therapy, think of all these other cancer therapies which are specifically tailored towards the patient now. So what you do in scale out, you can make more of it, but you just get more reactors instead of making the reactors bigger. So you just get a bigger number of reactors, but all of those reactors do not necessarily produce more than what you would think. And particularly for like individual patients, you could think of the concept where you have these plastic and disposable bioreactors. And if that's something, if you're looking at precision medicine, it might be more the answer to just have more of the reactors and in each one, because of the flexibility you need in your photo, produce something slightly different. And if you look at this reactor, so this is your typical spirit tank reactor uh, and the colors will indicate you where the tracer will go. And you will see the bigger that it will get, the less homogeneous you, the spread throughout your reactor will be and you will get issues with mixing. And now remember that most of these cells, if they want to fire, they need oxygen. And in the first scenario, the smaller one, you will see the oxygen is evenly distributed throughout the vessel. But as you're going to scale up, less and less of the oxygen is going to get through to all of the cells. And what happens in that case, if you remember the concept of flooding, that even though the oxygen is there, it's not able to reach everywhere in your reactor. So not all the cells will be able to access oxygen, which will mean that some of them will die off. So as you're scaling up, you have to remember that the physical properties will always change. And when you're doing it, there are ways of combating it. So you can look at, for instance, changing the reactor diameter of the vessel or of the impeller. But you could also think of, for instance, increasing the speed. So increasing the speed for this particular example would help to make sure that the oxygen is better distributed across the vessel. There are a number of uh, challenges associated with this scale up. So first of all, like if your, your surface to volume ratio changes, you have changes in the performance. And what we would have seen like with bioreactors is also a little bit different because in a chemical reactor, you wouldn't necessarily expect reactions to occur at the wall. But microorganisms do really like surfaces. So what could happen is that you see really, really good like response and quite like a small scale. And then when you start scaling up, you don't kind of see a linear effect there. So it could be sometimes if you do have, or if you work on relatively small scales, I think of this principle of scale out, that it might be beneficial if you have relatively more of the wall available to the microorganisms because they might be able to grow there. It is a very common way to scale up uh, keeping geometrical properties the same. So normally you would use like uh, the diameter to the height ratio of two to one or three to one, so depending on what you would pick. But if you do do that, you will see there will be uh, issues with the oxygen supply, but also with the removal of carbon dioxide. So the main issues you will get is that you probably will need to increase your speed, uh, as you would have seen in previous calculations, in order to combat the lower oxygen supply, or the fact that the oxygen can't go to all of the bacteria. And the second bit, if you can't remove all of this here too, remember that this has an influence on the pH. So you might be working in a pH regime that you don't necessarily want for the cells.
Now we will see surface aeration or aeration in general, so the oxygen supply is quite like a critical factor. And all of these things we need to take into account when we start scaling up. And we can do this in different ways. Um, and as you'll see in bioreactors, a lot of it will be empirical, but you could obviously use some computational tools as well to make some predictions. So there are a couple of common rules you can use. Um, so constant power to volume uh, ratio is quite often used. Geomatic similarity is often used, and the other ones are a bit less common. So what you will need to know for this, you need to know at least three of them, if I would ask you for an example. But more importantly, in the next slide, I'm going to discuss some of the, the drawbacks that are associated with these methods. Here you see an example of a scale-up table. So what they do, they picked an arbitrary number of one, which is kept the same, and then they looked at the influence of other parameters. Uh, and one I've circ circled in red, so you can see what stays the same. And I can see whatever else you change, you're always going to have an influence on the other parameters. So basically, you change one thing in the system, you can never keep the others the same. So here I'm just briefly going to talk about a couple of different scale-up strategies. Uh, and the first beginning with if you keep your speed n constant. So what you will see, if you keep that one constant, you will see that your p over v goes down. And p over v is related to your KLA. So basically what you're seeing is your oxygen transfer will go down. And this can lead to issues with mixing where not all the cells are able to get oxygen. And you get the problems before that I mentioned around um, flooding. However, keeping N constants is quite often used when you look at cells that are really slow growing or cells that are very sensitive to shear stress, because in that case you can't make N that high. Now the second strategy that we mainly looked at is keeping the energy input over volume the same. So you will, this is a very common strategy quite often used just like geometric scaling. So with this strategy you more or less keep KLA the same. There are a couple of disadvantages with it. So what you're not looking at is the heat transfer and then you're also not looking at the removal of carbon dioxide which I said before can give serious issues around the pH. And this strategy is not very suitable when you're looking at high energy inputs because in that case you will get a very high shear stress so you can also see that N has to go up. And within the text, you'll be able to find some more examples of different scaling methods, and their advantages and disadvantages. So I just recommend that you read the text at the content of this module. And the examples that I've just given you all apply to stirred tank reactors. And remember that when we were looking at the airlift reactor, we said that one of the main advantages of this one is that it was relatively easier to scale up. And you would have seen that in the example of corn when you were working with these really big towers which are around 60 meters tall. So if you want to scale this up, you are working with the concept of geometric scaling. So all what you really do is if you increase the, the heights, you automatically increase the pressure. This also means that the oxygen uh, will go up and your KLA will go up. So that's the kind of simple effect of scaling up. However, you have to remember that the downcomer was a critical design parameter. So the longer you will make your aerobic reactor, the longer the cells will be without oxygen and they might not be able to survive the journey. So ways of combating this is looking at multiple feed points. So where they enter the reactor at various points. And the placing of baffles, this is to, to have an impact on the coalescence and the gas holdup. And then the other thing you would need to look at is whether the cells are, are capable of dealing with the stress you're putting on them. Um, so ways of reducing this is, is again, this is these multiple feed points and also looking at what type of cells you're using. So for some cells, it might be a particular problem. For other ones, uh, they might be able to withstand these conditions better. Now, what should you have learned from this? So in this lecture, you would get like a general idea of uh, problems that are associated with scale up. So what problems might you encounter? And what are the very common ways of doing scale up within bioreactors? So what approaches could you follow? But if you give like an example of a certain approach, so remember for instance, geometric scaling, you should be aware of what principles are associated with it. You should also be able to compare the difference in a scale up for a stir tank reactor versus the airlift reactor. And then finally, and this is like only like a minor point, but I also talked about the scale out. And you should be aware of what the role in scale out in bioreactors and why this has an important role in precision medicine.